Welcome to the class once again. So today uh, we are going to study about uh, chapter 3 in your textbook Hornbill. Now this is called, the chapter is called Discovering to the Saga Continues. So we are going to study about uh, a king named uh, King Tut and the saga continues. Saga simply means the story that was used to told about this person. So this story continues. Uh, the, the discovery of uh, King Tut makes the story that people used to tell about this King Tut continued. So that is what we are going to study today and this is written by A.R. Williams. He was uh, a writer who was amongst the uh, the discovery of you know the you know, he, he he is a writer who is involved in studying about this uh, who King Tut is and what uh, this discovery had to do with uh, the story that is involved around King Tut. Now uh, the first in the first uh, part of the story we could see that. A little bit about uh, King Tut was written. He was just a teenager when he died, the last heir of a powerful family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. Now we all know that the Egyptian civilization flourished um, many years ago and th that Egyptian civilization uh, was amongst the oldest civilization in the world and in the Egyptian civilization we could see a whole level of civilized world i think you have all know uh, what pyramids are and uh, what happened to those uh, pyra these pyramids still remained uh, you know one of the world's uh, most magnificent uh, buildings and uh, wonders of the world when whenever they are uh, recording the seven wonders of the world the pyramid is always one of them so I think we all know what pyramids are and this uh, King Tut was only a teenager teenager means he was only about uh, 17 or 18 years of age when he died and he was uh, one of the rulers uh, powerful rulers of the Egyptian kings and these Egyptian kings, the line of the Egyptian kings, King Tut's ancestors, have ruled in Egypt for many, many years, centuries. Now, uh, in this, uh, in the first part of the story, the writer is saying that an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils. As King Tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient Egyptian cemetery known as the Valley of the Kings. Now, the Valley of the Kings is the place where um, many pyramids were could be seen these days and uh, the valley of the kings is also known as uh, valley of the kings because this is the place where uh, the bodies of many of the kings of egypt were buried in the pyramids so uh, we could see that uh, the writer had described how the weather condition was like on the evening when uh, King Tut's body was going to be uh, under the CT scan. So he said that an angry wind, angry wind means that uh, a very fierce wind had uh, blown in the desert uh, of Egypt in the valley known as the Valley of the Kings and dark bellied clouds. Now on the, uh, over the sky, they could see these clouds, uh, black clouds and it looked as if the weather is going to be very bad. It looked as if uh, it was going to rain anytime soon. And so uh, the wind was tearing up, the wind was blowing and there was uh, dark clouds over them. And they, it, it was 6 p.m. on 5th January 2005. So this is on 5th January 2005 and it was 6 p.m. It was almost um, very dark and uh, now, during that time, what they were going to do is that what was this, you know, the writer and the other experts were going to do is that they are going to perform a CT scan on the dead body of uh, King Tut, which was discovered, the mummy of King Tut, which was discovered in the uh, in one of the pyramids. So 
they are going to perform a CT scan on King Tut. Now, they wanted to know what happened to this uh, King Tut. They wanted to know what was wrong with the, uh, you know, the body of King Tut. They don't know how he was, uh, he, he, was he, he died long back ago. It was almost 3,300 years ago. So long back, uh, almost 3,300 years ago had passed. And still the body of that mummy, the body of King Tut, was preserved very good. They found his, uh, they discovered his body, which was still preserved very good. And they could perform a CT scan on the evening of uh, 6 January 2005. Now, when uh, people know, when all over the world, the news had spread all over the world that uh, the body of King Tut was going to be uh, performed as uh, uh, under a CT scan when people came to know about this all the whole day the whole evening tourists came lining up uh, trying to you know trying to uh, take a peek at what was happening in this desert in this particular pyramid where uh, King Tut was discovered now they were lining up and they wanted to see what was happening to this uh, young king that had died 3,300 years ago and what happened, what is going to happen after that. And uh, most of the tourists, they came here to pay respects to uh, uh, the dead body of King Tut. But some of them, they were carrying their guidebooks with them. They were murmuring uh, amongst each other. They were talking amongst each other and they were murmuring, murmuring amongst uh, them and they, some of them were gazing at the murals. The murals, murals means uh, the beautiful drawings, the beautiful writings that were there on the wall of the pyramid, inside the pyramid. So people were gazing at the pyramid. They were looking at the murals that were drawn uh, inside the walls of the pyramid. And some of them were whispering amongst themselves that, you know, maybe um, uh, the, the Pharaoh's curse what will happen to the Pharaoh's curse? Uh, there is a saying in Egypt that, in Egyptian, that if anyone disturbs the body of the dead Pharaoh, then the person who disturbs, the person who is responsible for disturbing that uh, death of that Pharaoh, I mean the dead body of that Pharaoh, has to bear a severe consequences. And they believe that either illness, a severe illness, or misfortunes will happen to that person or maybe even death can happen to that person i think you, when you see i you might have seen the movie called you know the mummy in which in uh, this uh, people the scholars uh, the hero of the uh, movie they went to egypt to discover to duck out uh, the, the mummy and to 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 learn something about it and that's when uh, the curse fell upon them and that's when the you know the dead body of that mummy which was lying there came back alive and haunted them and uh, trying to you know trying to take their life and disturb them uh, all the way through their journey so this is what the egyptians believe they believe that if you disturb the dead body which was lying there for years and years thousands of years you know, if you disturb the dead body of that Pharaoh, then something is going to happen to you. Some bad things are going to happen to you. Either you will have severe illness or misfortunes or death. So this is what they were believing. So the tourists were speaking about those Pharaoh's curse and they were whispering amongst themselves and they were saying, will this be true? Will this be true? Because today they are going to take away the Pharaoh's body. I mean, uh, King Tut is one of the Pharaoh's. So... Pharaoh simply means the term, the, the, the name that was given to the kings of the Egyptians, Egyptian kings. So King Tut's body is going to be taken from his resting place from inside the pyramid and is going to be taken out and put inside a trailer where a CT scan machine was there. And so they are going to put him inside the CT scan. They, will, they are going to perform a CT scan on him. So people are 
wondering what is going to happen to the people who are responsible for taking out the body of this pharaoh, or the, taking out the body of King Tut from his resting place. So they were thinking that maybe is the pharaoh's curse true? Uh, will the pharaoh's curse be true? If it is true, then the person who are, persons who are responsible for this taking out of the body of this pharaoh is going to meet with some misfortunes. So this is what they were whispering amongst themselves. The mummy is in a very bad condition because of what Carter did in the 1920s, said Zahi Hawass, Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. Now, when uh, Zahi Hawass was the Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, means the persons, the people uh, pr preserving and protecting these uh, findings in Egypt. Uh, he, this Zahi Hawass is the Secretary General of uh, responsibility uh, of taking the responsibility of these findings. So when he, when Zahi Hawass looked at the body of uh, King Tut, he spoke and he said that this mummy is in a very bad condition because of what Carter did in the 1920s. Now, Carter is uh, Howard Carter who is an archaeologist, a British archaeologist, and he is the one, uh, he was the one who discovered the body of King Tut in the first place in 1922. 1922, he discovered King Tut's tomb. Uh, tomb means the, uh, the place where King Tut's body was put, the dead body of King Tut was put. So, this, he discovered this King Tut's body in 1922. Howard Carter discovered uh, King Tut's body, King Tut's tomb in 1922. And when he uh, found this King, Tut, King Tut's body in the first place, the dead body of King Tut was um, buried with lots and lots of uh, worthless millions of uh, dollars worth of gold pure gold because uh, the Egyptians believe that they believe in a life after death and so they believe that you know this uh, person after he died he can carry all his riches with him rich uh, all his all these things with him so they believe in that and because the pharaohs were extremely wealthy and because the Egyptians believed that they could carry all their wealth with them in the afterlife. So that is why the reason why they were burying all these things along with him. And not only inside his coffin, not only inside the, you know, coffin simply means the box, the big box where they put uh, the dead bodies. And not only inside that coffin, uh, outside surroundings of the coffin was also full of you know, different kinds of uh, utensils made of gold. So many utensils made of gold. And so carefully, the Egyptian uh, Council of Supreme Council of Antiquities, they made a record of, you know, a, a record of one by one, they, one by one, they, they took out the antiquities, the, those um, gold uh, furnitures out of the, tomb out of the pyramid and so they make a record of it and the record of uh, doing this record of these antiquities alone takes like uh, months and months so what happened was that that is how you know because they were they they buried lots and lots of gold uh, antiquities along with the body and that it took them months to even keep a record of each one of those antiquities and so after they take out all the gold uh, pieces and they finally what happened was that when Howard Carter finally came to the coffin um, and when he uh, opened the coffin he could see that no before that uh, the, the record here says that you know Pharaoh's um, body King Tut's body was not only buried along with uh, along with the gold it was not only gold that was buried there they also bury uh, the everyday things that he is going to they, they, they believe that he is going to want in his afterlife such as the board, board games 
uh, bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine. So all these things were buried along with the body of King Tut because they believed that even uh, King Tut is going to need all these things after in his afterlife. So they bury along with him, they bury all these things, you know, food, wine, um, you know, undergarments. Undergarments means, you know, underwears and a linen, a bronze razor, as a razor simply for uh, the men, you know, they have to shave their beard, shave their mustache and they shave their beard. So they believe that King Tut is going to need this. So they, they bury along with him a bronze razor and also uh, board games, a board game like uh, what he is going to play with. And so they bury all these everyday things along with his body. And after... Uh, recording the all these uh, things that were buried along with King Tut's body, finally Howard Carter came to uh, open his coffin, and even his coffin is not like a normal coffin where you know they just built a coffin, a, a big box, and they just put the dead body inside, sealed it, and buried it. It's not like that. Even the coffin of uh, King Tut was a tree nested coffin means that there are three uh, parts where they were burying King Tut so it would be a very huge coffin so when he opened the first uh, the first nest the first uh, part he found a shroud adorned with garlands of willow and olive leaves wild celery lotus petals and cornflowers the faded evidence of a burial in March or April so all these things that he find when he when he opened the first part and those things that he find all these uh, plants and vegetables and also flowers and it indicates that all those things indicate that King Tut might have uh, died in the month of March or April because these plants and vegetables and flowers were grown in the month of uh, March or April and when he finally, finally after putting away all those things that were buried along with him, finally he came to the real body of King Tut. Finally he uh, came to discover, he came to uncover the uh, the body of King Tut. And what happened was that when he tried to lift up the body, he had met with a difficult a hardship was there. Because what happened was that um, when he see if you see this how they preserve their mummies the egyptian preserve their mummies you will see that they uh, they not only bury their body alone but they the whole body would be covered with uh, you know a white uh, what shall we say raisin um, a white cloth which was uh, plastered with um, uh, medis uh, medical Oh, oh, medical plasters and so what happened was that even King Tut's body was also uh, anoint, uh, fully covered with this you know raisins they were they, they were covering his body with those raisins and what happened was that because this it was such a long time that King Tut was buried 3,000 uh, more than 3,000 years ago and because of that the raisin had hardened the raisin that they used to um, cover his body had hardened and it had hardened at the bottom of the coffin and it was cementing cementing the body of King Tut at the bottom of the coffin and because of years thousands of years it had been cemented at the bottom it had become so hard and he cannot simply pull out the body of King Tut from his coffin and but because of what happened was that um, uh, he was trying to, uh, you know, he was trying to make this raisin melt. The raisin that was uh, covering King Tut's body, he was, uh, Howard Carter was trying to let it melt in the sun because the sun was heating up very nicely in the uh, deserts of Egypt. And so he was trying to do that. And... Uh, there are uh, some parts of the uh, pyramid inside the tomb. Uh, you could see that some part, uh, you know, sun rays can come inside 
uh, from some parts of the tomb. So he was trying to make, uh, put the body in the sunlight so that he believed that he hoped that the raisin might melt. But even though uh, he put it there in the sunlight, uh, 149 degrees Fahrenheit, it was heating up very nicely. But then even if he was putting it in the sun for s such a long time, the raisin cannot become uh, soft. It cannot be softened. It was still as hard as it was before. It doesn't soften uh, it to a little bit also. So afterward, um, he, uh, Howard Carter feel that now I cannot do anything because this, all these things were, you know, all the body of King Tut was cemented at the bottom and the sun could not uh, melt the raisin. So what I, uh, what shall I do? So he had little choice and because he was afraid that because King Tut's body was, it was not only his body alone that was, uh, you know, preserved, but along with his body, you could see, uh, Ornaments made of pure gold, those valuable things, you know, neck, uh, uh, neck, uh, what shall we say, neck, uh, you know, this, um, not uh, bangles, you know, and bangles, bracelets, anklets, and also even uh, the one that they used to put it on their neck. And if you see the pictures of, you know, Egyptians, Egyptian kings, you will see how they were adorned with all these ornaments, you know. Um, uh, necklaces, necklaces made of gold, uh, neck pieces, head pieces made of gold, pure gold, and bangles, uh, you know, armlets, uh, bracelets, uh, and even on their feet also, uh, they, they, they put all these anklets with them. And so all these were made of pure gold. And Howard Carter was afraid that he, if he leave it on just like that with the body of King Tut, he was afraid that thieves might come inside and they can steal all these valuable things from uh, the body of King Tut. So he was afraid and he wanted to take out all these valuable things and hand it to the authorities uh, of Egypt. So... He did not have any choice, and so finally, what he did was he cut off the uh, limbs of uh, King Tut's limbs. Limbs means uh, the parts of his body. So he cut off um, his feet. He cut off his feet in order to take out the anklets that he wore. So he cut off his feet, and then he cut off uh, his hand also to take out all the bracelets. And then finally he cut off the neck of King Tut in order to take out all these, you know, necklaces and uh, neck pieces that he wear. So uh, he plastered them together again. But once all those were cut off, uh, you know, it cannot go back to normal. So he plastered them again, but it cannot go back to normal. And so uh, what happened was that uh, Zahi Hawass said because of what uh, because Carter did all these things the mummy is not in a very good condition right now and so uh, in 1922 when Howard Carter uh, first discovered the body of King Tut there were no uh, medical uh, technology there were technology was not yet very advanced and they could not st they could not yet find out what uh, was happening to this body what was happening to King Tut during that time so they just leave it Carter and uh, you know all the other experts they leave the body of King Tut inside his tomb inside the pyramid and they left it like that and they preserve it for many years so in 1968 now uh, in after 40 years of uh, Car Carter's discovery in 1968 x-ray machine were already discovered and so when uh, they performed an x-ray on King Tut's body firstly they performed an x-ray on King Tut's body and when they perform an x-ray they find out a very mysterious and startling fact that um, the beneath the raisin that cakes his chest his breastbone and front ribs are missing so what they were finding from the x-ray is that the his breastbone and his front ribs, the ribs means uh, the, the, the bones that we have over here. So his uh, front ribs and his breastbone were missing. So they wanted to know more about why this 
bones are missing from King Tut's body and so they wanted to know more about what happened to this uh, king. But like I said before, uh, you know, technology was not yet uh, very advanced and discovery of all these technologies that we have today were not yet uh, discovered during those times. So they leave it like that again. And finally, what happened is that in today's world, after, after the year, you know, 2000, after the millennium, uh, lots and lots of uh, technological discoveries were made and so uh, not only x-ray machine was made now the CT scan is available now CT scan is a more advanced um, x-ray machine where the whole of your body uh, goes through a tunnel where uh, the machine will perform a CT scan I mean the whole a whole scan on your body and the the whole uh, scanning will be recorded in a computer and so from the computer you can easily see what is wrong with uh, this part of the body for example only the head part if you wanted to examine only the head part then you can enlarge the image in the from the computer you can enlarge it and then you can still you know um, cut the image of the head uh, into many many pieces and it, you can still enlarge that one piece and you can examine it nicely one piece by piece very closely so this is what city machine city scan machine can do and because of that they wanted to find out what is wrong with they they hope that they could find out what is wrong with uh, king tooth through this a CT scan machine and that is why they wanted to perform a CT scan on the body of King Tut. Now, uh, King Tut's um, death was a huge uh, event even for uh, royal, uh, royal uh, standards, I mean even for the royal families of Egypt. Now, the line of the ancestors of King Tut were mentioned here now. The first one that was mentioned is Amenhotep III. Amenhotep III was King Tut's father or grandfather. It was not very clear because during those times, they used to have many, many, many wives. The kings used to have many wives and so they produced many children. And so King Tut's, uh, Amenhotep III was King Tut's father or either he was King Tut's father or his grandfather. And Amenhotep III was a very powerful uh, ruler, a very powerful uh, pharaoh, and his rule was also known as the Golden Dynasty, the Golden Age, the dynasty's Golden Age. So they believed that he was uh, a very good ruler. He was a very uh, great ruler who, uh, you know, who started all this civilization, and he was the one who is upgrading all their uh, livelihoods, and he was a very great king. Now, after he died, uh, his son Amenhotep IV uh, succeeded him and initiated one of the strangest periods in the history of ancient Egypt. Now, what happened was that this great king had died and his son Amenhotep IV succeeded him. But Amenhotep IV was not as great as his father. So, what happened was that during the reign of Amenhotep IV, Egypt had faced... Uh, one of the strangest period in ancient Egypt, they were facing one of the strangest periods. Now, what happened was that this new king, Amenhotep IV, he promoted the worship of the Aten, the Sundis changed his name to Akhenaten or servant of the Aten. Now, this, um, the religious worshipping, he promoted a new god, like, he promoted the worship of the sun and so he co even named himself he even gave himself a new name and he named himself Akhenaten meaning servants of the Aten servant of the Aten Aten is the sun god sun god so he named himself as the servant of the Aten and so he even transferred his capital um, from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akhetaten. Now, he even uh, transferred his capital. He even changed his uh, city's capital from the old city of Thebes to the new city of Akhetaten. Now, everything was, um, there were so many 
uh, ups and downs during this uh, reign of Amenhotep IV. And what happened was he, uh, he shocked his countrymen, he shocked his people by attacking uh, their major god Amun. Amun was uh, what uh, 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 the god that the Egyptians used to worship before uh, King Amenhotep IV took place. But what happened was King Amenhotep did not want uh, the worshipping of Amun to continue. It, instead, he promoted the worship of the sun god the, the, uh, known as the Aten. So, he closed all the temples for worshipping Amun and he smashed all the images that were built, all the sculptures that were built in the image of the uh, Amun, the god, before he came to the throne. And so Ray Johnson had written that it must have been a horrific time. Now, uh, Ray Johnson had said that this might have been a very bad time, a very uh, no difficult time for the Egyptians. After Akhenaten's death, a mysterious, mysterious ruler named Smenkare appeared briefly and exited with hardly a trace. And then a very young Tutankhaten took the throne, King Tut, as he is widely known today now. After the death of Amenhotep IV, uh, a very mysterious ruler who did not rule for a very long time, known as Menkare, appeared on the throne. But then he uh, he disappeared quickly. I mean, like uh, he did not rule for a very long time. And after that, King Tutankhaten. Tutankhaten uh, now is the one who, that we are studying about now. King Tut, he was mostly commonly known as King Tut. Now King Tut came on the throne. And this King Tut, when he came on the throne, he was only about eight or nine years of age. He was only a, a, a boy, a young boy. Now when he came to the throne, he restored all the things that... Uh, his father or his grandfather, Amenhotep III, used to do. Again, he promoted the worship of Amun and he even changed his name from Tutankhaten to Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun means living image of Amun. So he named himself as the living image of Amun. He again, you know, restored all the temples, restored all the worshipping of, uh, again, promoted all the worshipping of Amun. And after he reigned for about uh, nine years, he died unexpectedly. Now, he reigned for about nine years. And when he was about, you know, 18, 19, 17, 18 or 19, his exact age was unknown. So he died unexpectedly. And his historical records does not mention how he died or what happened long time. There was a long gap after, you know, King Tut had died in the history, in the pages of the history of Egypt. So they don't know how he died. They just know that he died. And so many people were thinking that maybe uh, he died because of murder. Somebody might have killed him or he died because of, you know, poison, po poisoning him. So somebody might have poisoned him. So they wanted to know. This is what uh, the experts also wanted to know what had happened to this king this young king so on the evening of uh, 6 january 2005 finally there was a trailer a trailer means you know a very huge um a very huge uh, 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 uh vehicle a uh, uh, very huge motor and inside this vehicle they put up a portable ct scan a ct scan was carried to the deserts of Egypt where they set up the trailer near the uh, near the pyramid near the tomb of King Tut and they set it up there and on the evening of uh, 6 January 2005 at 6 o'clock the pole bearers the uh, you know they carry out these people they carry out this um, the dead body of King Tut from his resting place inside the trailer and suddenly what happened was after uh, about an hour after about half an hour had passed one of the men hurriedly ran out uh, from inside the trailer and when somebody asked him what happened he said that the fan uh, that was supposed to be working with the CT scan does not work it doesn't work and 
so there was sand inside the fan so they are looking for another you know portable fan to replace that fan that that came along with the CT scan so um somebody said okay maybe this is the Faroa's curse because there were sand inside the fan so maybe this is the work of the you know Faroa's curse but what happened was they uh, took two portable fans and they replaced it with the city machine fan and so it had worked perfectly and they can perform um, a nice uh, examination on the body of King Tut. Now after uh, they finish performing the CT scan on um, King Tut's body, again the people who uh, carried out and carried them back to the place where it was laid five uh, uh first uh, many years ago thousands of years ago so they put it back to its original tomb now back in the trailer the technician uh pulled up the image the image that was recorded on the computer they uh, the experts all the experts they look at it carefully the the neck uh vertebrae the neck uh, uh the image of the neck and the head were could be seen so they were examining each part very carefully and finally they breathed a sigh of relief because they were very relieved to find that there was nothing wrong with the body of King Tut and they even said that oh I could not sleep last night because I was so excited because we we're going to perform all these things today I was very excited I couldn't sleep last night tonight I'm going to sleep very peacefully and so all these experts by the time they left the trailer they all left the trailer uh, to go to their respective places to sleep in their respective um, places uh, in their uh, respective beds so when they uh, move out of the trailer when they uh, exit the trailer they could see that all the wind that had all the angry wind the fierce wind that had blown before or the clouds the black clouds that were uh, in the sky before had all gone there was no wind the sky was very nice and very clear uh, and it was still winter in January it was still winter and it was very cold so when uh, they were about to leave the trailer A.R. Williams the writer of this uh, piece he looked up the sky and he could see that just above the towering pyramid the towering tomb of King Tut um, you know at the uh, overhead in the sky he could see a, a star I mean a constellation of stars uh, known as Orion and this uh, Orion this constellation of stars the Egyptians believe that this is the soul of Osiris the god of the afterlife so he they believe that this constellation of stars known as Orion is the soul of Osiris, the god of the afterlife, uh, which the Egyptians believed. The god of the afterlife is watching over this boy king, watching over this king tooth uh, from up above from the sky because it was standing just overhead into uh, overhead the tomb of uh, King Tut. So this is what uh, the story is about. I hope you find it interesting and uh, what I want you to do is please read your textbook after you finish watching this uh, lesson, watching this video, then I want you to go to your uh, textbook, take out your textbook and read this particular uh, chapter because if you do not read your textbook, then you will not be able to understand the whole uh, the whole story. So what I want you to do is please read your textbook. If you read your textbook very carefully, if you know your textbook very uh, fluently then you will have no problem in the examinations so this is what i want you to do so please read your textbook with that i will say thank you class and hope to see you again very soon